Luke chapter 1, in verse 13, it says this, But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer. You know what is interesting? It isn't plural. They both knew what the angel was talking about. Zacharias and Elizabeth were struggling people. And they said, God, why don't we have a son? God, we are upright. We are obeying you. Why do we, why are we looked down and why are we scorned? You know our hearts. That was their prayer. It wasn't prayers. Anybody that knew them knew there was something they were constantly asking God for. You know what's amazing? God's spirit often uses struggling people. The words about this couple in verse 13, your prayer is heard, we see a part of this couple's life that they had ordinary problems. Most of us think that we have extraordinary problems, but the more you step back and look beyond the circle of your own life and your own problems, we find that we all face what Paul describes is what is our normal struggle. What James says is common to man. Everybody has something they struggle with. Not everybody knows about it, but everybody has something they struggle with. And God knew exactly what they were struggling with. By the way, when we pray, it says in Romans 8, 26, our prayers rise from our heart and they're captured by the Holy Spirit and he actually delivers them to God. Isn't that interesting? He helps us pray because we don't even know what we need to pray for sometimes. And so for all of their lives, the Holy Spirit had been listening, tracking, taking, and bringing those requests and putting them into the bowl in front of the throne of God the Father. And God says, yes, yes, I have the perfect moment. Just, he's going to be so excited. Finally, as an old priest, the crowning event of his life, he's going to get to offer the incense. And at that moment, Gabriel you know I've got you on reserve. I want you to go down there and stand to the right of the altar and scare the daylights out of him and tell him I've been listening. See, God often uses struggling people. They spent their entire married life waiting for a child, waiting for a son, living and finally giving up on ever being able to have a child. If we think about it, there are so many lessons that God wants to teach us from their lives. They didn't get bitter. They didn't get troubled with, with God's character. They just said, Lord, you know our heart. And they never stopped asking. You know, if we're struggling with something, do we feel we have an impossible challenge and an unmovable obstacle? Let God hear. He's the one that put it there. He's in charge of the circumstances. But here's the last element. God always uses surrendered people Remember uh, uh, that Zechariah, it says uh, in, in verse 18, uh, how can I know this? He doubted God. And then it says in verse 20, behold, you will be mute and not able to speak. Do you remember all that? Do you know what that event shows us? That Zechariah was a surrendered person. Yeah, he struggled with believing God. All of us do. But whatever God did, he surrendered to it. How do I know? So if John the Baptist was normal, how long did Zacharias fall under the, the muting button of God? Forty weeks. He couldn't talk. That was a direct, you could call it punishment from God for his unbelief. Do you know there's two things he could have done? shut down, withdrawn, and gotten distant from God, or what he did. What did he do? Well, look at the ending uh, of the chapter, starting in verse 68, because what we see is, after 40 weeks of waiting, Zechariah had been studying God's word. And when John is born and his dad speaks, what was Zechariah doing while he had no voice? Zechariah was studying. In fact, we can find, starting in verse 68, he quotes from Psalm 18, Psalm 23, Psalm 32, Psalm 34, Psalm 83, Psalm 106, Psalm 132, and extensive other passages from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Malachi. That's all in this Benedictus. And it's so woven together. When the Holy Spirit came upon this man who surrendered to God's will, 
He wasn't perfectly obedient. He didn't always do everything right. But he wanted to do what God wanted. He wanted to be useful to God. When he got to open his mouth, verse 68, he says, this one is going to visit and redeem in verse 68. Now, who is he talking about? Only Jesus can visit and redeem anybody. John the Baptist couldn't. You and I can't. Only Jesus. He was talking about Jesus' ability. In verse uh, 69, he is the horn of power. In verse 71, he can save. Only Jesus can save anyone anywhere. Look at verse 74. He can deliver. Uh, in, in verse 77, the knowledge of salvation to anywhere, anyone that responds to the gospel, Jesus can instantaneously. See, he started studying all the promises of this coming one that his son was going to herald. And he went through a study of Christ's coming in the Old Testament. And he, as a surrendered man, spoke for God. That's the last thing to think about. Have you invited God's Spirit to use you this Christmas?